now we're going to talk about prisons and we're going to talk about relationships in prisons between uh, the inmates and the staff. What's wrong with the world? Honestly, I don't go from one story to another, which makes me despair. Yes, so this is a huge problem. Apparently, it shouldn't be allowed in my view, but apparently prison staff and inmates are having these illicit relationships and uh, there are moves being made to try and tackle that rise in the number of criminals who are exploiting those relationships to... Uh, smuggle contraband into jails. OK, since 2017, the number of workers exposed to these relationships has grown by 30%, and uh, the Freedom of Information request has told us that retired prison governor and author Benenza Freik uh, joins us now to tell us more uh, about all of this. Benenza, you know, you ran a prison. You, you, you know what it's about. I mean, staff know the risks involved. They, they can know that they're being used for these sort of things. What, what, what are, are the attractions, Vanessa? What, what cultivates the fact that uh, in, in a pressurised environment like this that um, people who are supposed to do good and, and uphold the law and whatever, uh, with people who do bad, what, what is the attraction? I'm absolutely fascinated with this. Uh, good morning to you both. Uh, thanks oh, yeah. for having me on. Um, honestly, Eamon, I have no idea what the attraction is. Certainly, I never saw it. Um, I think we have to remember that, um, you know, prisons hold people who don't necessarily want to be there. And, um, and in a prison environment, um, a prison has very specific dynamics at play. Um, in order to maintain good professional relationships between prison, prison staff and prisoners, um, it's essential um, that those relationships um, run smoothly in order for, obviously, the smooth running of the prison. Getting the balance right... But Vanessa, who holds the power? Is the power emotionally with the inmate or is the power with the, um, the, 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 the jailer, right? The jailer who um, you would have thought they have the keys, they have the control. Do they feel superior to the inmate or does the inmate lever some control over the jailer? Listen, it, you know, prisoners have what what we all wish we had more of, which is time. They have time to look at um, prison staff who um, possibly don't uh, conform to the, the norms, the rules. Um, they have time to um, groom, to manipulate. But staff have to be aware of these, these um, issues. Don't forget, you know, Prison staff come from a wide variety of backgrounds. Many, many of them have had no experience in prisons or what it's like to work in a prison um, at all. So, you know, over the last sort of 10 years, the, the staffing, particularly experienced staffing, has been dramatically reduced. Um, and um, that leaves prison staff all... Um, ages and, and genres in prison vulnerable. And I think it's very important that those prison staff are supported. Yeah, uh, Vanessa, I'm interested to know, you know, obviously this is not permitted under the rules. As a governor, would you have allowed any staff in your team to have had relationships with inmates? And, and how do you spot it? How do you crack down on it? I mean, they're saying ministers are going to tackle these affairs, but this is all a bit of a, a bit nebulous. How, how do you get to the bottom of it all? Uh, first, first part of your question, absolutely not. You know, um, prison staff having um, illicit affairs with prisoners is dangerous. It's um, dangerous to that member of staff, it's dangerous to other staff, and it's dangerous to the prisoners. Mm -hmm. um, and, and quite honestly, prisoners can't hold their own water. So what you, what you need is good intelligence systems. That's how you beat um, corruption in prisons. Um, you know, also, I think um, over the years, recruitment, training, um, all of that sort of has, has been allowed to subside.